Body image. I'd say the meaning of this term is fairly self-explanatory. Body image is how we perceive our bodies. Whether it's positive or negative varies from person to person. One of the things that might negatively impact body image is social media. Yes, seeing flawless influencers is bound to create self-doubt, especially since we find ourselves comparing our bodies to theirs so often. For me, it almost makes me feel inferior and like I'm not pretty enough. I'm sure a lot of us feel compelled to compare ourselves to them, to their shiny hair, to their glowing spotless skin, to their size zero figures. These beauty standards are so difficult to escape from, especially since they're all around us. But what we don't need to understand is that a lot of this is filtered and edited to make it appear flawless and you cannot possibly accurately compare your bodies to theirs. It wouldn't be fair to your body. Unfortunately, a lot of these beauty standards have been around even before social media was as widespread. Let's go back a few years. It was the sixth grade and I liked this boy. The first boy that I ever liked. Sounds pretty exciting, no? It wasn't. It was an absolute disaster. The boy did not fancy me and he wasn't afraid to show it. This didn't bother me, but he was rude. His friends and him would go out of their way to mock me. And one of their focuses was my body hair, which was not a problem for me until that point in time. Very soon, a lot of my classmates picked up on this joke and well, you can guess how 7th grade went for me. I didn't think too much of it and went back to being my cheerful, bubbly self. 12-year-old me was a happy child. She did what she wanted. She wore what she wanted. She did what made her happy. Little did she know things were about to change. To this day, I cannot leave the house if my arms aren't covered, if they aren't hairless even if it's 40 degrees outside. And I cannot help but blame this major insecurity that has weighed me down for so long on a group of sixth graders that thought it would be funny to mock my body. This brought a lot of insecurity for me. I think 10 times before leaving the house because I think I don't look good enough. A boy once told me that he liked me and I asked him why. It brought so much self-doubt and so much anxiety for me. But for a lot of other people, it does not stop that. For a lot of people, it leads to eating disorders. For a lot of people, it leads to depression. For a lot of people, it leads to so many unpleasant things that I would not wish on my worst enemy. Look at society as a whole. Dark-skinned people are shamed for the color of their skin, whereas people with lighter skin aren't. Who comes up with these? Who said that having lighter skin is better or more attractive. Everyone is beautiful regardless of their skin color, their race, their gender, and the list goes on. Unfortunately, our culture has these beauty standards that families subject their children to, which is why children think it's okay to go to schools and mock their friends and classmates for their body. Sometimes families even use nicknames that highlight their kids' insecurities. And these insecurities aren't just restricted to the person with the insecurity. They affect the people with the insecurity, the people who they care about and the people that care about them. These insecurities don't just vanish with time. They stick with you. And you're bound to pass it on to people around you. And they would to people around them. It's an endless cycle. The thing with body image is you think you can control it, but you can't. Well, not entirely anyway. The body, your body image is determined by the people that surround you. A, the, a study done by the University of Waterloo suggests that the way you perceive your body is majorly influenced by the people that you have daily interactions with. Let's say that you start spending time with people who aren't too quick to point out your flaws. Because let's be honest, all of us have flaws. Nobody is perfect. But what we can do is learn to accept them, accept our own flaws and accept others' flaws. And I know this is easy for me to say, but when we start accepting others' flaws, this would be reciprocated and they would accept ours. And these insecurities don't come into picture until someone points them out. For example, 
I didn't care for my body hair until someone decided to make fun of it. Only then did I get insecure about it and only then did it start bothering me. So if we don't point out other people's flaws and insecurities, they would not affect them. Body image worsens, body image becomes negative when someone points your insecurities out because until they do, you don't really think about it. So when they do, your insecurities will worsen. So just be nice to each other, just be supportive and nice to each other, that's all it takes. But when, we, when you are being nice to others, you need to learn how to be nice to yourself. My therapist told me to look in the mirror and tell myself, you are important. And this felt really weird and narcissistic at first. But as I started doing it, it almost got validating. And then I realized that I don't need the validation of others. The only person that I need the validation of is myself because it's my body. I need to take care of it. I need to live with it. It's mine for the rest of my life. So why not take care of it and love it instead of loathing it? My therapist also asked me to keep an appreciation journal, to write down things that I appreciated about myself. This also felt really weird and narcissistic at first. But then as I got used to it and started writing things that I loved and appreciated about myself, it helped me like myself better. And this is something that we need to learn. We need to learn how to love and appreciate ourselves because each one of you is so beautiful and you deserve the world. And you need to tell yourself this. I am beautiful. You are beautiful. You deserve the world. You are more than you let yourself think that you are. Thank you.